Showing the effects of film grain in tutorials like this is tough because YouTube compresses the image. So if you can, watch this in 4K and let me pause the clip right here so you can see how these film grain overlays are reacting to the footage. By themselves, this is what the overlays look like. I'll pause them and zoom in. The 8mm grain is larger than the 16mm, which in turn is larger than the 35mm. And overlaid back on the footage, it looks like this. Another thing to point out is the wall back here. Even though the color of the wall may be the same, the shade is different. Look at how the grain reacts to the brighter side versus the darker side. There are ways to manipulate this, and in order to show you that, let me show you how to add film grain to your footage. First, if you don't have any film grain overlays, at the time of this upload, YouTuber TD Cat Tech has a full range of ProRes film grain overlays on his website for free. And these are the ones I'm using in this example. I haven't met or am affiliated with him at all. I just found these and thought they were a great resource. I'll put the link in the description. To apply the film grain overlay, drag it above your footage. I'm gonna use the eight millimeter here because it's easiest to see the result over YouTube's compression. Go to opacity, blend mode, and a common setting to choose is overlay. If you think the grain is too much, you can always lower the opacity. However, instead of using overlay blend mode, I find myself choosing soft light more because of how it reacts to the lights and darks in the image. It's a little bit more subtle, but still enough to give you that textured look. Experiment with both and see what works for you. Before we move on, I do think it's worth noting that there are other ways to add noise and grain to your image. You're currently looking at a side-by-side -side comparison where one side is using a noise effect from Premiere and the other is using a grain overlay. Which one do you think looks better? If you think the effect from Premiere Pro looks good, you can add it like this. Type noise in effects. You can try any of these other options, but Noise HLS Auto has the most control. Unfortunately, it is underneath the obsolete tab, so it may go away soon. Drag it onto an adjustment layer above your footage. Change the opacity blend mode to overlay or soft light. Under noise, select grain. The two parameters to adjust are grain size and lightness. Personally, I don't use any of these noise effects and the main reasons are this. One, it changes the contrast and color of the image. Two, the results look like a rigid digital noise on top of the footage. And most of all, number three, all of these effects take a lot of processing power. The moment I add any noise effect to my project, everything lags. And because of that, I stick to grain overlays because the playback is so much smoother. Now, a third option I have been exploring is film emulation with plugins like Film Convert Nitrate. You can add the make, model, and picture profile of what your footage was shot in, select from different film sizes and film stocks, and you can manipulate the grain response from the darks to lights, as well as the size, softness, strength, and saturation. From what I've experienced so far, playback is as smooth as butter and the response to when I adjust anything is immediate. I'm currently using their free trial version that has a watermark. And I think that's awesome that they allow you to download the entire thing for free and you can try it out for yourself. A few days later. Update from Javier in the future. I did end up purchasing Film Convert Nitrate and I wanna utilize that in a couple other effects here on this little Nas X clip that I filmed of him performing during ACL Fest. I'm shooting this on the Sony a7S III in S-Log. I'm gonna go to my effects tab underneath video effects. Where is it? Oh, film emulation, film convert nitrate, and just apply that to my clip. And this gives you a whole onslaught of things that you can do. What's also nice is instead of applying your own S-Log to Rec. 709, I can go to choose your camera and I have downloaded the Sony a7S III and here's all of those picture profiles. So I'll click that, hit apply. I can now go to all of these different film stocks and just start looking like, hey, which, which one looks cool to me? That one looks nice. That one looks even cooler. Maybe this one, I don't know. We could go black, oh man, black and white looks legit. Let's go with this one. Now I can adjust the grain size like so and that's way more grain. And this is 35 millimeters, so it's smaller grains to begin with. Let's go to 16 millimeter again, so you can really see what's going on. And I'm going to bump up the grain size. This already just looks so much more natural than the film overlay that I was using right here. It blends with the footage in a way that you, you can't get with an overlay. Is it worth the money to get something like Film Convert? 
I don't know, if you're doing a lot of film emulation, then yes, I think purchasing something like Film Convert Nitrate is worth the price. If you don't, then maybe just stick with some overlays. And I think this side-by-side -side comparison says it all. Hopefully over YouTube's compression, you can see the difference, but using the grain overlay does put grain on the image, but it's flat across the entire image. It doesn't interact with the darks and lights the way that Film Convert does. To me, Film Convert looks the most natural. The way that it's adding this grain really helps complement the image, and then obviously no grain, looks digital, and it's clean if that's the look you're going for. So after those steps, I was looking to create more of a film aesthetic, and I applied some overlay mats from our grain. I'll link those in the description. Then I wanted to do a little bit of speed ramping on the clip, which you're looking at right now. From there, I apply an RGB split. I did a whole tutorial on this technique. If you wanna check it out, I'll also link that right here. Next, I'm apply some film burns above the clips so it can lead in and out from this clip if it were a part of a bigger highlight reel. I add some lens distortion and some blur to the sides of the clip, and the end result is something like this. Little Nas X Premier Pro Tutorial from Javier Mercedes Cool Beans. All right, I know that's a little over the top, but hopefully that gives you some creative ideas for your own edits. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.